Hey, welcome back. So in my previous video, I showed you how you could get both Vicuna and Alpaca running on your local machine and be able to interact with it using Python via the Llama CPP Python bindings. What I'm gonna show you on this video is how you can get it running on a web server. So you can host your own Python web server using fast API and have a large language model such as Vicuna or Alpaca running against that. And then you can have your own REST APIs. So with that, we're just gonna get started. So to get started, we will just do uh, pip install uh, fast API and that will get that running on my machine. And you can see I've already got fast API running on my machine already. Then as part of that, it already comes installed as well, but I am gonna need a package called uh, uvcorn. You can install this yourself uh, by doing pip install uvcorn, uh, you know, bracket standard. So with that done, what we need to do is create our hello world application. So we will create a uh, new Python file called main.py. We'll open that up in VS Code. And what we'll quickly do is just do a hello world with fast API and then we can get on to playing with the large language model. So we'll just do from fast API uh, import uh, fast API. So that gives us our import. And then all I need to do is instantiate that. And I'm gonna create a, put a nice little uh, decorator on there, app.get. Uh, forward slash, so basically whenever I hit the base URL, then it's gonna give my response. And all we need to do now is create a function. So we'll say async uh, def hello, and we will return the message hello world. In fact, let's rather than doing message hello world, just do a hello world like that. So that is all I need to do. And to get that running, all I need to do is type in uvcorn uh, main, app dash reload. So if we run that, it's up and running there. It's gonna start that on our local host 8000. And there you go, there's my hello world up and running. And because it's got uh, things like uh, hot reloads, I can change that to hello world, uh, re Fresh that and you can see it's come back with hello world. So we're all good up and running. Okay, so we've got our hello world. What we're gonna do now is we are gonna bring in our Llama CPP Python uh, library and we'll be able to interact with our large language model. Now, if you want a bit of a deeper dive on, on Llama CPP Python, go check out my other video. It goes into a little bit more details. We run it in there, but, uh, but essentially you should get the hang of it as we go along anyway. So I'm just gonna do a pip install at Llama uh, CPP Python. Uh, as I explained on the other video, this is essentially a set of Python bindings to the Llama CPP uh, libraries, which is a C library. Uh, it's being used by a ton of models. That that C library works with the CUNA models, Alpaca. Uh, it works with a uh, Llama, obviously, and then there's new ones like Bayes coming out every day. So it's a really good framework to use uh, there. Llama CPP Python is really nice. It's also being used by things like Langchain as well. So if you want to have a higher level of traction, you can you can do that. But of course we're just gonna create our own web service. So we're kind of good to go. So I've got that installed now. Before I start writing my code, what I need to do is create myself a nice little models directory. And then I wanna copy my model into that models directory. So what you can see there is I downloaded the Vicuna model earlier. I'm gonna paste that in there for just now. We'll run that with Alpaca a little bit later uh, as well. Um, I still kind of prepare the Alpaca model over Vicuna, but I'm gonna show you with, with both. In the other video, I show you how to download both of those models. So you can watch that in the other video uh, and do that uh, here. But again, you can just Google it and, and, and pick it up. So I've got the Vicuna model in here just now. So the first thing I'm gonna need to do is import my Llama CPP library that we just uh, pip installed there. So we'll do uh, from Llama CPP uh, import uh, Llama. And then the next thing I need to do was load the model. So we'll just uh, load the model. So we'll just create a new variable called LLM and then we are gonna call Llama. We need to set our model path. And of course we need to set that equal to the model that we just put into that folder. So it's gonna be in models. And of course the name of the model was GGML Vicuna 13 bit blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that should uh, load the model and then I can just say model is loaded. 
Uh, and of course, I've loaded the FastApp API. So what we will now do is create a brand new endpoint. We'll keep the hello for just now, but we'll create a brand new endpoint and we'll just uh, maybe call this uh, model. So we're not gonna implement server-side events straight away. The first thing that we will do is just get the answer back as a whole, and then we'll move into server-side events slightly later. But we just wanna get this up and running first. So, so to access that, we will just do uh, stream equals uh, LLM. As before, we need to question the model, so we will just do uh, question. And we will say, uh, perhaps we will go with, uh, who is Ada Lovelace again? Okay, we did that in the last video. I just wanna be nice and uh, consistent. And of course, because it's a QA, and a we need to just specify that we're gonna need an answer. Again, I'm gonna set my max tokens uh, equal to 100. Again, we can make that configurable in the future if we were building that out to be a full API. And again, I need to uh, set my uh, stop token. And then we're, what we're gonna do is set that we want the answer to be echoed out. Okay, so now that that works, what we wanna do is just uh, grab a copy of that. So we're just gonna do a copy dot deep copy and of stream. I'm gonna import a copy up at the top here. So we'll just do import copy. And then if I wanted to, I can just output the result as a whole. So we'll just do a return result. And all I need to do now is start up my web server and then it should be interacting with the Vicuna model. So I'm just gonna call 8,000 model. And you see, it's gonna take a little bit of time here because it, it's not gonna do the server side events yet. It's just gonna take a little bit of time to, it's gonna get the full answer to send back to you. So we have to wait and then it's gonna come back with what the answer is from Vicuna. There we go, so it came back with the result, and of course, as I said, there was no server-side stream in there, no server-side event, so it's just came back with the full answer. Who's Lay? Ada Lovelace. Answer one, a mathematician who worked with Charles Babbage on the development of the first computer. Two, the first computer programmer. Three, the person who introduced to the concept of parallel processing computers, and an actress who's appeared in several films, including The Mummy Returns. I, I'm not sure she did, you know. Uh, again, I am not a big fan of the Vicuna model, regardless of what we say there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch it back into uh, the alpaca model and then see how this does. That alpaca model is now in my uh, folder. And then all I'm gonna do is come back into Visual Studio Code. I will uh, change the underlying model um, from the uh, Vicuna model. Let's just actually, uh, for easiness sake, we'll comment that one out in case we wanna switch comparisons uh, over time. So we'll copy that out and then we'll just uh, set this to uh, the alpaca model. And then of course, if I were to uh, run this again, you will see it's gonna come back with the answer of who the Lovelace is, but this time rather than coming from the Vicuna model, it's gonna come from the alpaca model. There we go. So who is Ada Lovelace answer? Ada Lovelace, 1815, 1852, British mathematician, writer, world's first computer programmer, daughter of Lord Byron, which she was, explains why she became fascinated with numbers and patterns. She published a recipe called Analytical Engine, in which she uh, foresaw the potential computers, blah, blah, blah. And now it's cut off there because I, I set a limit of 100. Please note, not in The Mummy Returns. So you know, I'm 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 preferring the alpaca model, but yeah, fair enough. Okay, so we've got alpaca model there. I think that's a pretty good answer. Uh, and again, it's free. I'm not calling OpenAI. I, it's a pretty good result. Of course, GPT-4, you're gonna get better results, but I think this is pretty good, especially for stuff that runs on your machine. So there's a couple of dependencies I need to do to get server-side events working with Fast API. The first one is install a library called AsyncIO. And then the second one I need to install is uh, something called SSE uh, Starlet. And, and really that is the thing that's gonna give you server-side events. That's what Starlet allows you to do. And again, you can go and check that out and spend a bit of time there, but it's a pretty cool framework and it allows you to do that. So well, let's come back into Visual Studio Code for a second. Um, rather than messing with my uh, model uh, service at the moment, what we'll do is uh, do something uh, simple first. So we'll just get something up and running with some jokes, for example, you know, get some basic uh, streaming, uh, make sure that we can get async working fine first, and then we're gonna come back to uh, the model. So I will, uh, I'm gonna create something called jokes. So we'll create a little, 
uh, jokes service. And then we'll just, uh, we'll call this uh, jokes for just now. And then one of the things I'm gonna need access to is I'm gonna need access to the request. So I'm gonna add that in there. You can see I get a, uh, it's not defined, etc. So I will just uh, do a couple of imports. So I'll import uh, async uh, IO. And then I'm gonna extend my from fast API and I'm gonna add in a request. Uh, also, and that will deal with most of this. So the last thing I need to import is SSE Starlet. So we'll just do from SSE Starlet and we will import event source response, which I'll show you what that means a little bit later on. So we'll, let's come back into jokes. For now, we're gonna get rid of all of this. And what we're gonna do is just add a nice little inner function here called get messages, which is essentially gonna return us uh, some jokes. So uh, so in this case, we'll do a yield and my wonderful joke is gonna be a horse walks into a bar. I'm not gonna complete the joke for you. I think everybody knows what the joke is. Um, next thing I need to add in here is we are gonna add in something that's gonna get the event. So it's gonna be another uh, function and this time it's gonna be called, we'll call it SSE event uh, just for fun. And then what's gonna happen here is we're just gonna loop around and get some events. So I'm gonna do this a while loop for just now. Uh, we'll change that as uh, time goes by. So we'll just do while true. One of the first things I need to do is just check that uh, we still have a connected client, that the client actually hasn't disconnected because a server-side event, just in case you've never dealt with that before, it's kind of like a, a, a kind of long pole. So what happens is you have a connection open and then as you get new events, then they're gonna get pushed down to the client. So of course, if the client disconnects at any point, i.e. the browser, then there's no events to, to send back. So we just need to check that the client is still connected. So to do that, we will just do a uh, request dot uh, check if it is is disconnected. And if it is, then we're just gonna kind of break that there. And then the next thing that we wanna do is just get uh, all the messages. So we'll just uh, check every message in messages. Um, and then if we get a message, we're just gonna yield that out there. So in this case, yield data message. And then once that's uh, done, we'll sleep for uh, a second, for example. So we're not gonna, you know, just really hit things. We'll just, you know, we've got all our messages. We're just gonna wait for a little bit put it in a little bit of a sleep. And then what we'll do is just use that event source response, you know, which is our server side events piece, which is remember is coming from SSE Starlet. And then that's gonna be able to send back uh, this event, which is essentially coming from this function. And then it's just gonna keep going round and round, putting itself in sleep. So now that that works, so we should, when we run our uh, Python app again and go to uh, forward slash jokes, we should just see a horse walks into a bar going over and over again. And now rather than running the hello world, if we go to jokes, we see a horse walks into a bar, horse walks into a bar. So it's just going round and round. So you see those server side events. It's just pushing, 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 pushing. If I wanted to get a real joke, what I could do is get a joke from a jokes API. So um, give me a Python uh, function called uh, get messages, which uh, returns jokes from the jokes API. I'm being super lazy, I'm gonna use ChatGPT. Okay, I've never heard of official joke api.app spot. I mean, hey, might be a real thing. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it, it, returns, yeah, it returns jokes, very cool. Let's copy this. We'll come back into Visual Studio Code, paste that in here. We need to import requests. And now that it's returning its message. So here we go. We have our jokes coming back uh, really quickly. Uh, why do bees hum? Because they don't know the words. What do ghosts call their true love? Their girlfriend, these are terrible. Did you hear about the two silkworms in a race? It ended in a tie, oh my goodness. So there we go, server-side events implemented. So that's pretty cool. We've got that up and running. The next thing we need to do is obviously change that. So we're talking to our large language model and then we can get that nice streamy effect that you would get from ChatGPT. So we're going to come back into Visual Studio Code. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves a new function this time that is going to talk to the large language model. So to do that, I'm gonna copy uh, some of this code from over here. So we'll just, uh, to make it nice and quick, uh, we'll put this in here. So all we're gonna do is, is talk to the large language model in the exact same way as we did before. 
So we're going to ask who Ada Lovelace is. So rather than calling this jokes, I think what we'll do is we'll just call it alpaca because we're going to talk to the alpaca model and we'll call this alpaca. I guess a llama would have made more sense um, since everything, in fact, let's call it llama since uh, everything is llama underneath there. So we're going to have stream there. We're going to get rid of this echo equals true and we're going to turn that into uh, stream equals true. So the next thing I need to do is I'm, I'm going to do something slightly different because I've got streaming uh, implemented at the moment. What I'm going to need to do is put an async generator around a stream so that I can just send out the data as and when it comes around. So to do that, I'm just going to do async uh, def async uh, generator and then we'll just yield whatever item is in the stream. Now, so now that I've done that, I can do an asynchronous for loop over the async generator. And essentially that allows me to deal with the stream. So uh, I of course need to check if the client's disconnected as I did before. Next thing I need to do is obviously get access to the data. So I am just gonna do the exact same thing as I did before, which is my copy deep copy on the item. And then what I wanna be able to do is I don't wanna be streaming out all of that JSON. Remember those big blocks of JSON, it's gonna go block, 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 block all the way down. So what I want to be able to do is just access the text. So to do that, I'm just going to uh, create a new uh, variable called text. And then what I am going to do with that is I'm going to access at result. And then I'm going to get the choices attribute. And then I'm going to get the first element of the choices attribute and get the text attribute from underneath that. And that's just me sort of uh, going through that JSON to get the exact response that I want. And then all I need to do is uh, yield out uh, that data. So I can get rid of this now. And the last thing I need to do, just as I did before with the jokes one, is return server side events. So if I save that, and if I go to forward slash llama, we should get streamed out responses of who Ada Lovelace is. So there you go. You can see Ada Lovelace, uh, 1815 to 1852 was British, math, blah, 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 blah. So it's given all of those answers. So of course, if you wanted to take that, uh, strip out all the data stuff, put all your front end client in there, you can have that sort of stream server side event experience that you would have if you were using OpenAI, ChatGPT, GPT-4. As I've shown you already, this works with Ficuna, it also works with uh, Alpaca works with Llama, and of course, uh, all of these new models that come out, whether it's Koala, whether it's Bayes or whatever, you're gonna be able to do the same thing. But I think it's pretty cool, the fact that you can take these models that run on machines, or you could put on a Docker image, um, you can run your own large language model, and you can put an API in front of it without any cost. Now, of course, in the future, that means if you want to, you can go down the line of fine tuning your own models. Again, I'm sure quite a lot of people is gonna sort of standardize these servers and you wouldn't need to necessarily create it in the way I've done there. Um, but I think, you know, just being able to sort of write your own code, host your own Python servers, uh, uh, you know, hosting these models is great. And of course, it's not restricted to uh, Python. Of course, I'm, I'm implementing it with Python in this particular case, but if I wanted to consume this, you know, have a JavaScript call this or whatever, then you're gonna be able to do that as well. Anyway, absolutely awesome. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And I will catch you on the next one.